So the topic of uh, discussion is uh, extendable hashing. So we have seen uh, the need for hashing. What is mean by hash function? What are the two uh, problems arises? Uh, what are the two techniques uh, there are uh, available to resolve the collision while doing uh, hashing, separate chaining and open addressing? under which also we have seen many topics. So now uh, it is the time to discuss about a new topic that is extendable hashing. So when, before uh, going into theory, uh, let us look into the picture. So an extendable hashing is a kind of a hashing which has been performed with two concepts. One is a directory is maintained Another one is a set of buckets is maintained. The directory is uh, uh, referred by a value uh, parameter called the global depth that uh, signifies the number of bits uh, of uh, LSB as well as the each bucket is also uh, uh, signi uh, designated with the parameter local depth which also signifies the uh, number of uh, binary bits of the number that is going to be stored. So extendable hashing uses these two concepts. One is a directory concept, another one is a bucket concept. And it is used to store the data after converting the data into a binary number. And the directory as well as the bucket will refer a value called global depth as well as a local depth that regard to the number of bits of the equivalent binary numbers in the LSP side. LSP side is uh, left most uh, significant bit that is LSP side. So there are many theories related with that. Uh, but before the theory, uh, first uh, let me explain the uh, example uh, how a list of data items can be stored uh, with the help of this extendable hashing. Then we will uh, go to the theory back and we will uh, study the uh, concept and algorithmic steps and uh, any other constraint, right? All right. So let us uh, consider an example uh, which is a list of items like this 16, 4, 6, 22, 24, 10, 31, 7, 9, 20, 26. So these are the items given uh, in which uh, you have to use an extendable hashing to store the data items. So as the uh, theory says, uh, when you want to store these items using extendable hashing, you have to imagine a directory as well as a bucket for bucket you have to mention the size as well as for the directory you have to mention the size so let us take both the bucket as well as the directory the size is three three uh, three in the sense of uh, directory is uh, the maximum of three lsps three in the uh, that is the three is the global depth three uh, here uh, with the respect to bucket uh, Local depth is uh, three binary bits, three binary bits. But this size is nothing but three items. So all are here taken as three. All are here taken as three. Right? So based on the bucket size, we can limit to the global depth and the uh, local depth. That is, uh, we will see when with an example. So first of all, before uh, doing the uh, hashing you need to convert the given element into its equivalent binary number so almost uh, five digit has been allotted uh, or has been fixed for representing each uh, number into its equivalent binary number so these are the things so 16 is equal converted into its equivalent binary number four is converted into equal binary number six like that every number is converted first so next year, what you have to imagine is uh, what you have to uh, do is you have to design a directory initially the global depth starts with the value one that means the last uh, lsb single bit has been taken so that may be either zero or one so zero with the zero one directory slot is created with the one one directory slot is created then for the zero directory slot you have a bucket whose local depth is also started with one for one directory slot, there is a 
in bucket whose local depth is also started with one right now if i want to insert 16 so in order to insert the element 16 first i will check its binary format the equivalent binary number for 16 is this that i have as i taken a five bit five digit number so five bit number so five bit la vandu 16 if i am going to represent then it is uh, one four zeros so what is its lsb lsb is saying that it is zero so in the directory in the zeroth slot for which the packet is attached i have to store the 16 here 16 here next to take the other element four what is its binary what is its uh, binary equivalent one double zero that is in behind that double zero zero one zero so if you go that uh, go back to that uh, zero zero one double zero 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 one double zero so zero zero one double zero so what is the lsb again zero what is the lsb for uh, six it is also zero so you have to store both uh, four as well as uh, six in the first bucket that is uh, pointed out by the directory slot zero now what you have observed here is this bucket has reached the maximum size that is the bucket size is three here i am not talking about the global depth value as well as the local depth value but the maximum size of that bucket is it can allow only three elements that's what we initially assume so based on the assumption now what we can infer from this uh, situation after inserting the element 16 4 and 6 is this particular bucket has been filled up that is it reaches the maximum level Next, we start inserting the another element. So, what is the next element in the row? That is the element 22. What is the LSB? What is the binary equivalent? This is the binary equivalent of the number 22. What is the LSB of this number? 0. So, what slot this number 22 is also going to take? 0 to slot in the directory. As, so, it is going to be stored in the first bucket. So, if you are going to store that 22 in the first bucket, you face a condition that is overflow condition why overflow condition because the overflow condition is occurring uh, due to it the situation that it uh, uh, crosses the limit that is the allowable limit or size of the bucket only three elements is allowed now we are trying to push the fourth element so what you have to do is you have to think about whether you can increase the uh, uh, that is uh, whether you can enhance elongate the directory or you have to split the bucket so there is a step uh, that is uh, there in one slide when we discuss those slides uh, just uh, after explaining this example in that slide in that step seven it is uh, discussed that then this overflow condition occurs when this overflow condition occurs you have to check whether local depth and the global depth is equal yes local depth also here all the elements are pointed to single slot the global elements the size is also one lsp so since both are equal what you can do is you can do two operations you can either you can do two operations you can uh, split the packet as well as you can expand the expand the directory so you will expanding the directory now the global depth will become two why two instead of taking the single lsp from a binary equivalent of a given number to be inserted. Now we are going to take the two LSP, two LSP, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, like that. Now, accordingly, the packet has been uh, splitted. That this packet, 16, 4, 6, 22, has been uh, splitted. That is, the 16th last two bit is 0, 4th last two bit is 0. So these two numbers is put in the slot 0, 0, with the uh, local depth is 2, because these two bits is having. Uh, two numbers is uh, refer, refer, referring to the uh, zero to slot of the directory whose depth is also two bit if this uh, local depth is also two bit and next to the element 22 uh, and six those law lsp numbers are one zero and here also for 22 it is one zero so it has to be put in the uh, slot uh, one zero whereas we put in the slot one zero so six twenty-two. so here also two two bits so the local depths are Two for this bucket, two for this bucket, and for this bucket, it is one. And you can make this bucket to refer more than one slot, more than one slot in the directory. That is possible, not uh, wrong in it. So don't imagine that since you have four, you need to have four buckets. But when situation arises, you can go for more four. But what is the thing is, we have only two buckets. What we have done is just to be expanded the directory from single bit to two bits. 
if we expanded the directory from single bit to two bit there are four combinations are possible so four slots are created in the directory but what is the other step you have done simultaneous to this one the bucket is split into two so this bucket is split into two so that 16 and 4 is in one slot and one bucket 622 is in another bucket that represents the slot 0 and 0 because of that LSP and 622 because of that LSP. So like that it is uh, story. Now come to second element as uh, another element 24. So what is the uh, uh, last two bit of uh, this uh, 24? 0, 0. So 24 is stored in this slot. Uh, what is the 10? 1, 0. 1, 0 is stored in this slot. So like that, uh, this. so here no overflow condition, so we proceed accordingly. Now come to the third one, 31. Uh, another number, 31. So 31 lost to two bidders, uh, 1, 1, right? So since it is 1, 1, it is a stored, it is connected with the last uh, bucket, which is uh, referring the 1, 1. And another is 7, uh, triple 1. So that also can be stored uh, here. And uh, 9, that is also 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Right, so that means zero one last two bit. So zero one means this packet. But here the depth is one. That the depth is one. For all other cases, that depth is two. So here also we do not encounter any uh, overflow condition. Overflow condition, right? Next, insert the element twenty. So 20, if you look at it, it's a LSB is a double zero. So where I have to insert, insert the location 20 here. So what is occurred? So overflow condition is occurred as well as the local depth of this particular bucket is uh, equivalent to global depth, is equal to global depth, right? So what you have to do, you have to expand the directory as well as you have to split the bucket. So in doing so, what we have achieved is you have increased the uh, bucket size to three bit with a global size depth 3 and uh, this bucket has been splitted into 2 what is that bucket is split into 16 4 24 20 so 16 4 should be in one bucket with uh, referring to the slot 3 day, 3 bits so 16 last 3 bits is 0 24 last 3 bits is 0 so it is referred to the slot triple 0 4 the last uh, bit is uh, 1 double 0 last 3 bit is the last 3 bits 1 double 0 for 20 the last bit is 1 double 0 so it is referred to 1 double 0 so this is a 2, 6, 22, 1, 0. 6, 22, 1, 0. If you take 6, 22, so double 1, 0. Uh, double 1, 0, 6 is there. So where is that? It is referring to this one, double 1, 0. Or you can say that if you, since it is the depth 2, depth 2 can also refer this because of if you take the depth 2, it is 1, 0. It is 1, 0. Uh, 22, double 1, 0. So double 1, 0, it is referring if you take the global depth 3, but you can also refer with the global uh, local, local depth 2 with the 1, 0, 1, 0, because the last two bit is 1, 0. What about the 10? 10 is uh, 1, 0, so it is not 0, 1, 0. So 10 is, is referred to 0, 1, 0. For this packet also, it is possible. For two bit uh, uh, local depth also, it is possible. Likewise, uh, here, 31. 31, the last three bits is triple 1, so here it is stored. Even it can go for one bit also. One, one bit, uh, one depth uh, uh, global depthness and one depth uh, local depthness also holds good for 31. So it is local depth this one, otherwise it is 3, 3, 2 like that. The situation is there for that. Next come to the another scenario. Now what you are to going to insert is the number 26 you are going to insert. So if you insert the number, the last three bits are 0, 1, 0. So in, that is the case we have to insert the 26 because 0, 1, 0 is pointing here, 0, 1, 0 is pointing here. Let me look at it, 0, 1, 0 is pointing here. I think you are uh, able to visualize uh, 0, 1, 0 is pointing. So but what is the thing? The size is big. Uh, the size is uh, not uh, that much sufficient to insert uh, 26 overflow condition occurs. But here the one situation is this. Overflow condition occurs in the bucket, but the global depth and the local depth are not equal. So only the local depth is lesser. So in that case, what you have to do is, you cannot go for expand the directory. Instead, what you can do is you can just split the bucket. See, if uh, global depth and local depth is equal, as well as uh, the maximum slot, that is the uh, overflow condition occurs. That is a case, step 7, like case 1. But this is a, a new one, step 7, like case 2. So in that case, what you have to do is just split the bucket into two. Accordingly, you have to store the data elements. 
So this is the way in which you have to uh, do the things. So that data uh, insertion or data storage with respect to extensible hashing. So what are the points we need? You need to remember here is so you need to have a bucket. A bucket have have more than one pointers. If its local depth is less than the global depth, look at it. See this bucket is the one which is having local depth of one. So it has uh, four pointers, right? So it can point to this slot. It can point to. It can refer to this slot. This slot. This slot. You can take one point. Well, if it is local depth one means with reference to reference to LSB uh, one bit with the one we can refer this uh, kind of items. But what about the others? Others are only one connection is possible, right? Only one connection is possible because all the things you have to strictly to be uh, LSB uh, three bits. So that is the condition. When overflow condition occurs, yes. When overflow condition occurs, when the number of items that is you are going to push it into the bucket reaches the maximum limit. So what at that time what you have to do? You need to rehash. You need to rehash the element with a new local depth. The new local depth. If the local depth is also uh, equal to uh, global depth, then what you have to do? Then you have to double. That is, you have to increase the uh, directory and you have to increment the uh, global by, uh, depth uh, by one. So that's what we have observed in the example. But uh, the size of the bucket cannot be changed. That is, when you are uh, about to begin the incessant task, you have to assume or you have to consider the size of the bucket. If it is three, then it is throughout the uh, process, the size of the bucket should not be changed and it should be. So this is what the idea of mm, uh, uh, extended level hashing. Uh, and this extended hashing, you may find uh, many advantages. What kind of advantages is in terms of computing? See, here there is no mathematical uh, computing like a hash function is involved, right? So you need not to calculate a model operator and you not you need not uh, calculate uh, a new hash function whenever the hash slot is uh, uh, find a collision with respect to open addressing. So those kind of things are not possible. And another thing, there won't be any data loss. There won't be any data loss since the storage capacity, we are increasing it dynamically. So whenever we need a particular slot to be uh, used for storing a data, it has to be increased. It has been increased. So there won't be any override there. There won't be any derailing of data items. So obviously, there won't be any data loss. Also, when the dynamic changes in the hashing function, what is the dynamic change in the hashing function with respect to depth, depth value? Well, first time you are taking the LSB, single LSB, then two LSB, then three LSB. Likewise, we are changing that. And accordingly, we are rehashing the data values. So what is the thing is you always uh, go for a new hashing function and you will always give a guarantee that uh, the data are retained and the data are not get lost. right? What is the limitation? The first limitation is the bucket size. The second limitation is the directory size. The directory size cannot go beyond a certain limit, a limit, because it has to follow a certain distribution. And another uh, limitation that you need to accept is uh, wastage of pointers. See, that is obviously available in many data structure, many data structure, obviously. When the memory get wasted, say for example, global depth and the local depth the difference is very drastic. Say for example, uh, in this particular example, at the end, at the end, if you find this one slot is uh, one pointer, that is uh, still two more slots are available, and that slots is wasted. But other things are completely occupied. But imagine a very large set of numbers. There, if you the global directory will go to 10 bit and the local directory still has one bit means, then there is a loss, more loss of bits. But the, here it is only lesser loss because of the two difference between the local and the global depth is two. But if there might be a situation when if the number of elements is very large, the global the, the directory get expanded bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, the directory get expanded. At one point of time, the directory uh, the global depth will be 10. And any one bucket in the situation of uh, extensible hashing, the size should be uh, very uh, minimum, that is a two. So that situation is also uh, uh, possible and this will bring a uh, disadvantage, uh, that is a limitation when you are going to implement the extensible hashing. So what I have uh, discussed to you is, uh, that is extensible hashing. And uh, slightly I go to the example and illustrated the 
step by step implementation of extended sample hashing with respect to the example what are the step you have to do how to store the data and uh, how the packet uh, splitting can occur or when the directory expansion can occur and uh, finally uh, with the advantages as well as limitation i have uh, discussed in the topic now let me come to the theory first what is the theory is saying uh, the theory is saying so what is that extensible hashing it is a dynamic hashing method first of all and what are the concept it is used it uses two concept directory and the packets what is the kind of method is it is it is aggressively that is a dynamically it is also a flexible method it is a dynamically flexible method so that means it you can keep on increasing it you can keep on increasing it and we can make any changes dynamically and also it is flexible nature whenever you keep on increasing the number of things what are the main features the main features is the concept it is using one is a directory another is function so directory is used to store the address of the packet that is a slot number through which slot the packet is comes out so that means the address of the directory and for each directory slot an id is assigned that is 00 is one id 10 is another id 11 is another id 01 is another id with respect to that you can mention the directory id and what is the bucket so bucket is the one which actually holds the data which actually the data or key you can say that so this i have discussed uh, before starting the class uh, before starting the topic uh, what are the frequently used terms this may be used uh, when you uh, for some two more questions so what is meant by directory you know it what is meant by directory or whether any condition is associated with the directory uh, what is meant by bucket what is a global depth what is a local depth uh, packet splitting directory expansion so everything is uh, self explanatory the uh, definitions are so i will upload the uh, slide also in the google classroom you will very well understand the idea what is a directory what is packet global depth local depth packet splitting and directory so what is packet splitting so when the packet size is reached then what you have to do in order to accommodate a new element into the uh, packet which exceeds its limit then you should face a overflow condition at that time you have to split the packet when the packet split has occurred and at that time if you find global depth and local depth are equal then what you should do you should do expanding the directory expand the directory what is the local depth is what is the mean by local depth it is the number of binary bits associated with the packet what is global depth it is the number of binary bits associated with the uh, directory directory so what is packet it is the concept or it is a data structure used to store the data what is directory it is used to store the index of the packet you may say like that index of so what is the basic principle here so you have the data to be inserted into a list a kind of data structure uh, for which first you need to convert the data into binary then you uh, input the data into the hashing function the hashing function will Uh, start with the lsb uh, based on the lsb one bit a single bit it will keep on increasing from single bit to two bit two bit to three bit three bit to four bit like that it keep on increasing first it the uh, store it in the directory uh, the as a id value or index value then that uh, directory points to a packet and that packet will store the uh, data so that is the basic principle figure the so the basic principle or algorithm first step you have to analyze the element uh, whether the element is a integer string float accordingly you have to give some uh, measure but uh, for our illustrative purpose we have taken a integer number so in order to uh, go to the storage or organization of data so whatever may be the kind of data first you have to convert the data into binary format so third step you have to check the global depth Uh, and uh, the packet size and uh, the local depth and based on the value you start uh, identify the suitable directory so in this directory in this id that id is connected with this packet so in this packet only you have to store like that you keep on adding the data so one particular point so like that you have to navigate the entire thing and you have to put the data the step is going on smoothly but where you face a struggle is whenever you reach the maximum limit of the packet or when you face the global depth and local depth is equal so at that time you face some situation at that step you have to go to the step 7 so at the step 7 you have two things you need to remember so one is uh, whether you need to uh, split the packet alone that is okay or that is uh, sufficient 
or you have to uh, split the packet as well as you have to expand the directory. So when the insertion process uh, reaches the maximum uh, limitation of the packet size, and at that point you have to check whether the global depth and local depth are equal. So in that case, you have to split the bucket into two as well as you have to expand the directory. Otherwise, what you have to do is in case the local depth is less than the global depth value, just is, uh, splitting a bucket is sufficient. So whenever you do this step, then the step eight will what will do? On second, will rehash the element, the element that is stored in one kind of index before splitting and expanding. Now it is rehashed to another index. So like that, the step goes on. Uh, at one point of time, all the elements uh, been uh, successfully hashed. So these are the steps that you should remember before uh, getting into the task of extendable hashing. So this is the example that I already explained. So I think, I hope you understand, you follow the idea of extensible hashing. So where, what are the data structures that are again useful for? That is a listed data structure, so a listed data structure. So listed data structure. And that can be implemented via array or that can be implemented via pointers that is linked list. Another is a B tree, B tree. that is uh, you can go for B plus tree also because uh, if you dealt with the external memory then B plus tree is uh, okay with you uh, in terms of uh, faster retrieval of data as we have discussed in the previous units, right? So next our focus of the uh, unit, the fifth unit is, I hope you understand the concept of extendable hashing. Next, uh, our focus of the uh, fifth unit is the shorting techniques. So we have many shorting techniques, bubble shot, selection shot, insertion shot, shell shot, reddit shot. These many shorting techniques are available uh, as per the syllabus. But uh, I will cover this uh, topic in a different class because uh, it needs a separate hour to discuss. But however, uh, in this class, I will conclude the uh, session by uh, saying you that difference uh, between uh, uh, linear search as well as a binary search because this topic is already discussed in many times. So, linear when you store a element uh, with the linear data structure uh, like uh, list, uh, stack, queue, then in that data structure, if you want to search any element, then obviously it is a linear search. If so, linear search, what it does, so it let us assume an array of any elements like this array of elements. Like this. Say, for example, the array has contained this many elements 10, 50, 30, 70, 80, 60, like that. So, if you want to search any element, say, for example, if you want to, if I, I want to search 20. So, if you want to search 20 elements, so I, even though I know the index value, I do not know where 20 is there. That 20 is there. First of all, I do not know whether 20 is there or not. So, whatever it may be, I have to start the first location that is the zeroth index. So one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one, I go. And wherever there is a match, then you have to say that I have found the number 20 in the given list. And that 20 is available in the index number 6. Like that, you have to report the result, return the index value. If there is no match is there, then you have to return null or you have to return minus 1, stating that the given element is not present in the list. So this is what linear search is about. What is meant by binary search then? So binary search is uh, one which uh, aims uh, to create a tree-like uh, uh, structure that is a binary search tree lecture. So the center node, that is the middle node, that is the root node, will have the value whose uh, right hand side will have the nodes always greater than that one, whose left hand side will always be a one which is having lesser elements. So that is the idea of a binary search tree when we are considering the same. But here, how that binary search concept is implemented in a linear array. The same thing from this. See, say for example here, uh, how this binary search, say this is linear search. Uh, but in order to implement uh, or in order to convert this linear search into a binary search. Here also you have to imagine the same, what is that? Array, same array. So how it is possible, sir? In array, whether binary search is possible? Yeah, yes, of course, possible. Only thing you have to study, you have to follow a suitable strategy according to the binary search. Some may think that, no, sir, if you want to do binary search, I definitely go for creating a binary search tree. So if that is the case, binary search tree is the one which is having the property of binary search. That's what it's having the name binary search tree. But what is meant by binary search? Why you have the name binary? Every time you are dividing the element into two halves. That is what binary, right? 
so you know that right unary binary tertiary uh, right you have the name right so that's the name of binary so even with the linear data structure like array binary search is possible say for example this picture illustrate the linear search in the linear data structure let me uh, change this task uh, of searching for the value 20 in the linear data structure array as a binary search so if i want to uh, implement a binary search for this linear data structure i have to follow certain rule that rule is explained here that, that rule is explained here let me explain it with this uh, example here so what you have to do is in order to implement the binary search you have to find the median or mid element so what is the mid element say for example this is the mid element let me assume that this is the mid element now you after splitting the element into left of right of and mid element for the given array now what i have to do is i have to compare the given element 20 with the mid element so if that mid element is greater than the given element that means the given element is lesser then your search should be in this area in this area because it is greater so you, this area only will be lesser if your searching element is lesser then you have to go this side, this side. But now you have wondered, sir, this linear search, uh, how it is possible, sir, here 10, 50, 30, 70, like that, like that stuff is there, then what is there? So for which, what you have to do is, you need to short the given element first. So this element should be shorted first. So if you are going to short, all the elements should be there, 10, 20, right, 30, uh, 40, uh, 50, uh, 60, uh, 70, uh, 80, 90, like that. Now the mid element is this one. So mid I have split it. I am comparing the 20 with the 40. So 20 is lesser. So I will take only this element. I omit all this element. So my now my search is reduced to 50 percentage. That's why the binary search is, uh, is, we are saying that it is efficient. We are not bothering about this 50 element. Comparison we are making it with the mid element. We are giving, splitting the given array, given list into two of with respect to mid element. And we are comparing the key element uh, to that is to be searched with the mid element. If it is lesser, you have to take the left off. If it is greater, you have to take the right off. So if you are omitting one off, that means 50% uh, of our effort has been uh, reduced during the searching task. Now, again, you have to do the same task. Mid element, you have to find the mid element. This is the mid element, and you have to compare the mid element. Now, oh, 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 here we have may, uh, entered into a success because the mid element is the one we are searching. So, under two attempt, we make the uh, search uh, very efficient at uh, the time, F, uh, time uh, lesser time when compared to the linear search. But in linear search, how many comparisons we have made? We have made this one comparison, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. So, we are making a seven comparison to search for the element. So, but higher, how many comparison? Only one comparison for first division of the element and the second comparison. So, there is only two comparisons. So, this is what the efficiency of binary is. See, for example, so this is the binary search concept. This is the array. So, this array is a shorted one. So, first of all, you remember that the array should be shorted. So, array is shorted. You have to search the 23. So, the mid element is 16. So the 16 is compared. So 16 is uh, since the 16 is uh, so since the search element 23 is uh, greater. So you have to take the right off. So again you are finding the mid element. So you have to omit this uh, left off. Again for this uh, right off you have to take the mid element. So in that mid element 56 is there. 56 uh, is greater than 23. So what do you say? 23 is lesser. Now we are going the left part. So in the left part, you are going in the middle element. Middle element is the first element. So this one, among the two elements, middle element is the first element. Now you have entered into the success. This is what the binary search is offering you a facility of reducing the element by reducing the element uh, number of elements to 50 percentage in every uh, search task. So for every phase, the number of elements is reduced to 50 percentage, 50 percentage because of the finding of middle element, right? So, what is the uh, comparison between linear search with this binary search? So, if you compare the time complexity, the linear search is uh, taking very uh, bigger time, that is, we go off n. So, this kind of linear complexity you will study in the next semester subject, that is, a design and analysis of algorithms. There you can study in detail. But nowadays, uh, but at present, uh, you just assume that 
the complexity uh, that is the time taken by the linear search is very higher and it is in general represented as big o of n but that uh, kind of thing is not possible with the binary search it is a half way reduced half way reduced or half way cut up cut up with the linear search so that is there so the binary search time complexity is big o of log n on the whole uh, the binary search is very good when compared with linear search in terms of comparison but what do you do binary search you have to perform uh, only when the data is in ascending order so you have to arrange the elements in ascending order then only you need to go for binary search so the basic principle behind linear search is linear search will always check for equality of number whether this number is equal or not if not other number equal or not if not other number equal or not if not other number equal or not but what is the thing with the binary search we are making a different different search uh, set of items based on the order so we are changing the order so this is the element middle so you are taking that in this example like that so this is the uh, differences uh, between uh, linear search right so with this um, i uh, close the uh, today's uh, discussion i upload the material in the uh, google classroom as well as uh, youtube Uh, so that you can understand the lecture well later during your examination preparation let me stop this recording first